Are you just starting off learning a new subject or topic and have no idea how to be efficient and effective with your learning? I've covered lots about studying for exams, but what about if you're learning something new for the very first time and are just getting started using Active Recall to learn effectively? Well, today we're going to focus on how to learn content you're seeing for the very first time quickly and effectively. Hey folks, welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name is Alex. I'm a surgeon and founder of a few edtech companies, and on this channel, we focus on learning and human performance to help you live healthier, wealthier, happier, and more productive lives. Now, in my videos on active recall, spaced repetition, and using game design for learning, I talked about the importance of using these evidence-based study techniques to make you way more efficient and effective when studying for exams. But what if you're seeing the content for the very first time? Well, jumping straight into creating questions or flashcards might feel overwhelming and breaking out of old habits like reading and making notes, which you've been taught for years in school, can feel really, really tough. So to help you get started learning new content, I'm gonna break this video down into sections so that by the end, you'll learn the difference between memorization versus understanding something, the key to understanding and remembering new content, how I got started using Active Recall when learning new content, and then I'll give you some tips and tricks to help you learn new content as fast as possible. So be sure to stick around to the end of the video and do hit subscribe to be notified of when new videos drop in this evidence-based learning series. So let's jump into the first challenge you face when presented with learning new content. How do you actually approach it and get started learning efficiently and effectively? So spoiler alert, the key concepts behind learning new content as quickly and effectively as possible are active recall and spaced repetition. So no surprises for anyone who's been following along with this channel. If you're new to active recall and spaced repetition, do check out my longer videos, look in the evidence behind them. But as a quick recap, loads of studies have shown that your brain is a little bit like a muscle and memories are formed when we actively try and pull information out of our brain by recalling things rather than just passively putting them in through things like reading, like we might be taught in school. To then remember that information, again, a little bit like a muscle, we need to recall the information in increasing intervals to make sure we don't forget it. This is just like how a muscle will grow under stress with weights and will shrink back down if you stop weightlifting. If you don't retest your brain, you'll start to forget things. Now, when people are first introduced to concepts like active recall and the idea of self-testing, rather than just reading or taking notes, they'll usually watch a YouTube video about creating questions and not taking any notes at all, and will then make some assumptions and fall into one of two categories. Either the whole process seems way too hard and they're much more comfortable passively making notes and this is what they've been taught in school. So they take notes and reread and highlight ahead of exams. This method might work for them, but it just takes way longer and is less efficient and effective. But as they're comfortable, they just flat out refuse and nope out on using active recall at all. The second way people go is that they go all in and start creating loads and loads of recall questions and flashcards and start immediately testing themselves and then rote learning and memorizing these specific facts. This is a problem as while they are testing themselves, they're not necessarily understanding the actual content they're learning. So if you find yourself making loads of flashcards or questions for every single fact, you need to ask yourself, do I really need a question or flashcard to remember this? And do I actually understand what I'm learning? So you don't want to just passively read and you don't want to go to the other extreme and start memorizing very, very specific facts. For people starting out, you don't want to fall into either of these two groups. And instead, you want to focus down on two key things. Firstly, understanding the topic and understanding where it fits into what you're actually studying. And secondly, you need to then retain and remember that information and then apply it. This will not only help you to learn faster and more efficiently, but will allow you to apply your knowledge through that understanding and work out answers to questions that you've never seen where someone who's just learned lists of specific facts will likely get stumped. Now in the book, Make It Stick, the book highlights the two main goals of learning as firstly comprehension. You want to gain a deep understanding of the underlying principle in order to understand how it applies to different situations. And secondly, retention. You need to remember the information when a problem or situation calls for it. And when you get a chance, build upon it with more advanced knowledge. So understanding plus remembering means good learning, means good exam performance, means good real life performance or whatever you're doing. So let's dive into how to understand new content. So we're going to focus on gaining a broad understanding of the new content and the easiest and best strategies to understand something for the very first time using active recall as the most effective and evidence-based approach. But first, what do we actually mean by understanding something? Well, the Merriam-Webster dictionary definition that I quite like 
is the power to make experience intelligible by applying concepts and categories. This makes understanding synonymous with comprehension just like make it stick, or just simply grasping a topic by being able to apply what you've learned compared to memorization, which is about recalling specific facts. I covered an even easier way to remember what understanding means in my video on the Feynman technique, where Nobel Prize winning physicist Richard Feynman suggests that understanding a concept or topic is demonstrated by your ability to explain it in simple terms as if to a child. So if you can't explain something new that you're learning to a child or to a friend or someone else, you don't understand it well enough and you need to dive deeper. To actually do this, there's no magic bullet other than putting in the hard work and going through textbooks, videos, and learning materials. Now the key here is to not go through the material passively like the group who noped out on active recall altogether, but to continuously test yourself and ask yourself questions as you go through this new material. You see, active recall isn't just about studying for exams by creating questions, like in my video that focuses on creating your own study questions. Active recall and self-testing can be used to learn anything. And if there's one thing you take away from this video as someone who's learning new content, it's that it's fine to read a textbook or watch a video, but you need to test yourself as you do so, as it's the fastest way to learn new information. Don't just read and reread or highlight, actually test yourself as soon as you spot something new. So for example, if you're reading through a textbook for the very first time, rather than making notes or highlighting things, you want to be reading a paragraph and then closing the book or hiding the paragraph and trying to recall the key points in your head or by writing it down and seeing if you can rephrase the concepts in that paragraph in your own words such that anyone you explain it to can understand. If you can't do that, open the book back up and go again. And when you go again, you might want to read a little further around the topic you couldn't remember or Google any terms which you're unfamiliar with to start building up that understanding and then test yourself again to see if you can actually explain the concept in simple terms. By going back to the textbooks and rereading around the topic, you're building up structure and context of the topic and how it fits into your current understanding to help you make sense of it. Medicine and surgery are a great example of this idea of understanding the concepts and principles over simply rote learning facts. For example, in my surgical exams, I could rote learn that applying something called traction is a way to treat a long bone fracture. Sure, I could memorize it, but I don't necessarily know why it's a treatment and I couldn't apply the principles to other questions as I just don't know them. If instead I'm going through and thinking, do I know how traction works? Or can I actually explain what traction is in simple terms? I might then dive into Google or a textbook and learn a little bit deeper while still testing and probing my knowledge to build structure and understanding. In fact, even now when talking about it, I'm thinking, can I actually explain all the forces around the fracture site? and going into really deep concepts around the physics of traction. If I learn the concepts and physics principles behind the treatment, that traction is basically applying weight or a force to straighten out the broken bone against the pull of the muscles, which pull on the two broken parts and cause pain, I can apply these principles to lots of other bone fractures and it also helps me when actually treating a fracture in real life or when I'm explaining the treatment to a patient. While you're reading, you're staying engaged by testing yourself with active recall and probing your own knowledge actively and searching for answers, which helps interleave topics and link them together to build that structure rather than just passively reading. Once you have tested yourself going through your initial first pass of the new content, you then need to ensure that you're remembering it for effective learning. For example, you'll naturally forget things due to Ebinghaus's forgetting curve, which is why it's so important that when you learn any new content, you add it into a spacing schedule and plan to come back to it to test yourself again and see if you can remember it as well as understanding the topic. This is spaced repetition, and I cover this in detail in another video, but just as a top level overview, the first time you go through and actively engage with new content, you're focusing on identifying knowledge gaps and making sure that you test yourself, that you understand the topic, and then you need to come back to it again to make sure that the information sticks. And if it hasn't stuck, you need to go back to those source materials. So how did I start using Active Recall for learning new content? Well, when I started out, I used lots of experimentation. I already did some self-testing when I read things, but completely switching to Active Recall on the first pass of learning something new felt really difficult. So for me, when I first read the book, Make It Stick, one of the key takeaways was when they gave examples of students who changed their grades around from bottom of the class to getting top grades using these evidence-based study techniques. One really memorable standard example was a medical student from Georgia Regents University who was overwhelmed by the volume of lecture notes and scored low grades as he just tried to memorize things and read through all the notes in their entirety. He switched up using some internal active recall questions with simple stuff like what did I just read 
and what is this about? And this was a real world example of these methods working. Now what really helped me push through was that he also reflects that the method felt uncomfortable at first as it felt longer stopping and testing rather than just reading, especially if a test was rapidly approaching. But his advice was to trust the process. This is true of many things that will challenge your usual comfortable way of thinking, but may well work out better in the long run. Carpe Gate Allen 2009 believed that students get illusions of competence from rereading their notes and textbooks, which is why people find it so tricky to adopt active recall as they're convinced rereading works despite all the evidence. One reason for the illusion is that the text contains all the information, so it's easy to glance over it and feel as if it's known well, when that is not the case at all in reality. For me, testing myself and trying to recall information as I went through on the first pass of learning new content hugely helped my understanding and my speed of learning. And I incorporated this into how I prepared for lectures and studied for exams, as you can see in some of my other videos. Now, there are lots of ways to use active recall, such as flashcards or closed books, or writing down questions, and it really doesn't matter what you optimize for, as long as it works for you and is efficient and effective. So for me personally, I will read a few paragraphs and mentally test myself, and then I'll naturally go down a rabbit hole of going to YouTube, Wikipedia, course tech books, and literature papers to get a really solid 360 understanding of the topic. To help you get going quickly using Active Recall to quickly learn new content, here are some of my top content hacks for learning new content. Whatever you're learning, get hold of the course syllabus or ask teachers or people who've scored top grades on the exam or course before you to find out what the high yield and most commonly tested topics are. You can also look at simple things like what lectures or classes will be coming up in the next few months so you have a basic top level overview of how things fit together so that when you first see a new topic, you have an understanding of why you're learning it and where it fits in. Having this context will help you to prioritize what you're learning and also help you know where to go to learn more and in what detail you need to learn things. It's crazy how few people do this, but it can really help you when you start out. Next, make sure you pick the best source materials to learn from. My hack here is to ask the top scoring students from previous years what they used and to then aim to get a short notes book, a longer textbook, a question book or question bank, and then have some reliable YouTube channels or websites you can refer to. For medical finals, I use this short notes finals revision guide combined with the Oxford Handbook of Clinical Medicine and YouTube searches in addition to lecture notes and slides to help me quickly fill in knowledge gaps and develop a deeper understanding of each topic I was learning. For clinical OSCEs in medicine, I'd use actual YouTube videos of clinical exams combined with recommended textbooks from the highest scoring students from the previous years. Now, as you know from my video on how to study for exams, I'm a massive advocate of using existing resources like past papers and online question banks to save you a huge amount of time and hack your learning. When I was studying for my surgical exams and learning new content, I just jumped straight into question books and question banks that used active recall questions and which had pre-made explanations just like this one and I also used online question banks straight away. As I worked through these, I didn't care if I got questions wrong, and if I did, I'd fill in my knowledge gaps and develop a deep understanding by then going back to the textbooks to make sure I actually understood things if the explanations provided weren't helping me. I'd then also do past papers, which are obviously the most realistic example of the types of questions you'll get at the exam. Again, speak with people who aced the exam before you and find out what the best resources are, or failing that, just jump into a Google search and see what the best rated pre-made testing materials are for that subject, as it will save you a ton of time in the long run. By supplementing high quality question banks and past papers with information from longer textbooks, you'll save a ton of time while ensuring you have a deep understanding of any topic. My next step is a bit more introspective. Despite all the evidence we've just spoken about, people still find it uncomfortable to go straight into testing themselves. Even people using online question banks might feel that they need to read through a topic before jumping into the questions. So as we've seen, you need to trust in the process and test your assumptions. Starting off by simply reading a paragraph of new content and then using active recall to ask in your head, do I understand this, is a great first step and you can then build up your active recall and spacing process based on what works best for you, whether going straight into question banks like me or creating your own questions or flashcards. Do what works best for you, but make sure you apply active recall to understand what you're learning rather than just memorizing facts. And then use spacing to test yourself again in a week or a month to make sure you retain that information and understanding for longer. Now, if you do want to create your own recall questions or try that out, I have a great video diving into how I created questions for medical finals using active recall, which I'll put up in the end cards. Thanks so much for watching. Thanks so much for subscribing. Do hit subscribe if you haven't already done so, and I'll catch you again in the next video.